I'm your host, Ken Patterson. We are at the 13th annual St. Louis Prototype Modelers Meet. I'm doing an outdoor photo shoot. We're going to talk about this table saw. That's absolutely magnificent. This is the best hobby in the world. The what's neat. What's neat. What's neat. What's neat starts now. Catch the What's Neat podcast every week and full episodes of What's Neat every month at the Model Railroad Hobbyist YouTube page. For this week's show, we've got a special treat. This show is an hour and 17 minutes long in that Saturday night during the regular recording. We had Broadway Limited Imports on, we reviewed some other manufacturers' models, plus we discussed layout construction. Also, on Sunday, we got an interview with the wonderful folks from Rapido Trains. They were in town on a bus tour, and they were kind enough to stop by here in the studio so that after the main show that you watch, then I include the Rapido interview right after that. So when I, when it looks like we're starting to clap, it's not over yet. So. Enjoy, kick back, break it up in a couple of segments while you're modeling. What's neat this week in Model Railroading, show number 269. Okay, uh, Scotty called. He said, put your microphone yeah, on yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Scotty. I got you. Mm -hmm. Was it 23 minutes into the show? Yeah. Oh. Today is his anniversary. Him and his wife are in uh, Colorado in Denver. It's his birthday. Stuff. Happy birthday. Why didn't you say so? We could have I just cake found and out what an just, ass. seven minutes ago. <laughs> I told them we're. Look at, look at podcast notes. Wow, oh, look nice. at all those look notes. Man. There's nothing there. I put notes on All right, ready, set, go. <laughs> Let's right, do a countdown. Go. Look, we got Curtis on tonight. Hey, Curtis. Yay. Yay. <laughs> ready, set. Three, two, The What's Neat This Week video podcast is supported by enthusiastic model railroaders just like you. <laughs> Further support is provided by Microengineering, keeping you on track with quality products for 55 years. Check out their website at www.microengineering.com. Order from your local dealer or order direct by calling 1-800-462-6975. Additional support is provided by Spring Creek Model Trains, your destination for model trains. Stop in and say, wow. Check out their website at springcreekmodeltrains.com. And by Intermountain Railway Company, where the detail makes the difference. Check out their website at intermountain-railway.com. Additional support is provided by Yelzma Graphics, America's leading distributor of quality railroad art and embroidered clothing since 1985. Check out their website at yelzma.com. Further support is provided by the NCE Corporation, the power of DCC. Visit their website at ncedcc.com. And thank you for supporting the What's Neat This Week podcast. This is the What's Neat This Week show in model railroading, show number 269 for March 23rd, 2024. My gosh, we're almost up to 270. I love yeah. those even numbers, right? Oh my gosh, we got a lot of great things going on and a lot to talk about. In fact, Mike and Joshua came out and helped me work on the layout or tear it up, whatever. We ended up with something that still runs. So rock and roll, a lot of neat stuff. Sitting all the way on the end over here, we're going to start out with Daniel Coombs. Hey, Daniel. Hi, guys. How y'all doing? It's awesome to have you tonight. Sitting right Thank next you. to Daniel, we've got Mike Buddy. Hi, everybody. Mike's got a lot of neat stuff to talk about tonight. Sitting in Skype land, we've got Curtis Coke from Broadway. Hi, Curtis. Hi, Curtis. Hey, Curtis. Hi, guys. How's it going? It's absolutely awesome to have you tonight, Curtis. Welcome to our show. 
Thank you for having me. Excited to be here. Sitting right next to me, I've got Joshua Barton. What's up, everybody? Hey, Joshua. And right next to Joshua, we've got our favorite birthday boy, <laughs> Steve Mantia. Yay! Thank you, thank you. Happy birthday, Steve. Steve. <laughs> Steve just turned 29 today. That's so it. Holding. The same, same age as you, Ken. That's, That's it. We're that together. is absolutely yes. right. I love it when everything matches up. <laughs> yeah. um, I want to talk about the train on the table because it's so exciting and it's so beautiful. I have got to talk about this. I shot this model outside and I got video of it inside all lit up. And here's what I'm talking about. This is a brand new train from Bachman. It just came into hobby shops this week. And this is that beautiful via rail train that they run up in Canada. It's got that C, uh, SCV uh, charger, 42 charger locomotive on it, on the point with the Canadian red leaf on it. These cars are lit. I shot these cars outside and the engine outside, as you can see from these photos. And these cars have each got different numbers on them. There's four cars on the table. I'm only showing you two of them here in the photographs. And they're business class and coach cars. There's four available, four different numbers. And what's not available yet that I'm going to have in about three weeks to show off on the show is the tail end car. And what do I mean by that? This is gonna be push service. So the last car of this, and I got some video that I pulled off of uh, the internet this week to show you, looks just like a Siemens Charger locomotive except for it's got the windows up the side where the passengers would sit. Hmm. So what a beautiful concept this will be when it's complete. I want to show you this thing run uh, sitting on the layout at night. We've got a video clip of it. Uh, the headlights are absolutely amazing as are the interior lights and this car's got full interiors. You just gotta paint the seats the appropriate colors. So hats off to Bachman and TCS. They're doing the sound. The lead locomotive's got sound in it and the rear locomotive, the rear tail car will also have sound in it. Very cool. So I'm excited about it and I enjoyed watching it run on the layout and the outdoor photography that I just showed you of it. Uh, Mike and Joshua held the mountains over here. Let me show yeah. you the photo one more time because this photo is dynamite. It's my screensaver tonight. They held the mountains up for me. It was about a 30 mile an hour wind. I usually use a tripod to hold the mountains, but they did it. So yeah, yeah. thanks. It was awesome. I yeah. made it look easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Curtis, you have got a lot of neat stuff to talk about tonight. And I, I, we have a hint because you sent us a great big email. Oh yeah, some of the stuff mm -hmm. on there is- A lot of great stuff, a yeah. lot of great stuff coming out. Um, I, do we want to go through? from uh, start to finish on that email, or do you guys want to see let's some, talk, talk about something let's, else first? Let's talk about your most favorite things, because, I mean, you've got the dream job. A, you had to move to Florida from the cold north, as you explained. <laughs> yes, yes. B, I mean, come on, you're in Florida, for heaven's sakes. And you just told me it was a beautiful 75 degree day, and you're in the Shoot. toy train industry. Brother, you yes. got the best job in the world, <laughs> and you're young, too. <laughs> and I don't have to deal with snow. Uh, my parents had about four inches of snow uh, back in Chicago uh, wow. yesterday, I believe, actually. <laughs> uh, but so don't have to deal with that either and all the salt and grimy with that. But, yeah, it's a lot of fun being down here. We've got a lot of exciting announcements. March has been packed with uh, several different product uh, announcements for us. Um, but the, the biggest one that I'm here to, to talk to you guys about today, um, we announced back in January at the Amherst uh, show um, that we started the Conductors Club. Um, it was met with some pretty mixed reaction, but we think that people are going to be really excited about it. And actually, I can give you a hint. If you can notice the background behind me, these are going to be the first Conductor Club uh, members-only exclusive locomotives. Um, in HO scale, we've got the Union Pacific Late Challengers, um, the 3985 uh, as it appears in Excursion Service, and the 3977 with the Greyhound. Um, as it appears at the museum with complete with polished rods and everything like that. That's beautiful. Um, and yeah. with this membership, a lot of people are kind of um, wondering about the prices and stuff. Well, since we're announcing it on Monday and we're recording this ahead of time and it goes out, I can give you guys all that info. So um, the Paragon 4 version of these late challengers, you can get from us, directly from us, for $349.99 with sound, DCC, all the details and everything. Um, the stealth version of these models will be $249.99, and that's DCC ready. And the speakers will be installed. So if you want to add um, your favorite aftermarket uh, sound decoder or even just a regular DCC decoder, um, you can do that as well. Um, and then for N scale, 
uh, we've got the big boys again with smoke, um, and we're going to be offering those um, in two different road numbers. We've got the 4014, of course, the famous one that's restored and runs today. Um, the only difference with this one that we've offered um, and for members versus the ones that we've offered in the past is that we've actually put the chalk marking big boy on the front of the locomotive. Nice. Uh, and then we're also offering another unique one that we haven't offered before, and that is big boy number 4019, and that has uh, smoke deflectors on it. The Union Pacific um, experimented with the smoke deflectors on the 4019 between 1944 and 1945 yep. um, to see if it would make any difference. And um, it was only for a few months, um, but they ultimately decided not to do it. Um, but it's still, there's um, very, very few photos out there of the, the model actually running with the smoke deflectors. So we offered that, um, again, available exclusive to uh, Conductors Club members. Um, if you haven't signed up yet, you have to sign up for the membership. It's only $30 for the year, but you get an extra year of warranty on all new BLI products. You get an extra 10% um, off our online outlet refurb store. Um, so if you go on our website, broadway-limited.com, and you go on there and you go onto the outlet store, we already have some models that are discounted on there already that you can get your hands on, but you get an additional 10% off on top of that. And uh, additionally, we're still working on getting the web page landing page for uh, members to go sign up on. Um, but we do have a VIP um, product suggestion portal that'll be coming um, in uh, uh, several months where you can literally tell us what you want us to make. And we will be able to see like which models are in demand for that you want us to make. And that could be offered in a conductor's club running at some point down the road. Um, in terms of these locomotives, we are only offering them once a year. So if you are a member and you love UP Steam and you haven't had a challenger of ours in a while, um, go ahead and sign up today and you can get your hands on one of these. The order deadline for these is May 30th of uh, this year. And um, it's important too, if you're a stealth customer, um, in order for us to make these models at these prices, the factory has asked us to make a minimum purchase order for these I was models. Gonna, so I was gonna ask if we do that. not meet the minimum number of stealth orders, right. we'll unfortunately have to cancel that, but you can still, um, we're gonna give you a, a couple days notice if that's the case. So that way, in case you wanna get a Paragon 4-1, you still can get your order in um, for either the Big Boy or the Challenger. You, um, but yeah, very exciting stuff. We're super excited to see how people react to this and see what um, uh, the reaction is, especially for the price. Oh, and I forgot to mention too, um, for the first go around, um, not only are the locomotives going to be in special boxes, commemorative members only boxes, um, but you're also going to be receiving a Rolling Thunder receiver for free from us. Oh, wow. So that's going to be another uh, perk for people too, if, if they're interested um, in signing up for the Conductors Club. Daniel, I see you have a question. No, 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 no. Yeah, you know, I'm sorry I tried to serve you there, the but uh, you've got me now in the UP because I'm a big fan of the UP and the UP excursion steam. So either maybe I might get a stealth model. So I'll tell you what, you got me sold on signing up. I think I'll do that uh, tonight after I get home. Well, I'm telling yeah. you, four, f under four hundred dollars for a HO Challenger is an amazing price. You can't Die cast find that Challenger. Anywhere. I mean, yeah, think well. about it. It's yeah, just, new sounds and everything too. We're, we uh, are excited about that. Um, and a lot of different uh, details that we've added to these. And we haven't made these late challengers in HO since Paragon 3. So it's been a while since we've offered these before. Um, so same thing with the big boys in N scale. We haven't made that in about a year and a half, I believe. Um, so if you missed out on the first run and you want to get your hands on one, especially for how low are the prices on these compared to our previous offerings, um, again, you're buying directly from us. So you will not have to go through your uh, local hobby shop or anything. You just go onto our website, broadway-limited.com, and that's where you'll be able to get your order in. And you said by the end of May? Yeah, May 30th <laughs> is the order deadline. Um, and we'll, of course, send out reminders and stuff like that for people to get their orders in um, so that way they don't miss out on this opportunity. That's great. We'll remind mm -hmm. you guys, too, yeah. at home. Definitely going to probably get the Cell Series Challenger. Yeah, oh, yeah. He's got me sold on maybe both of them. I mean, we'll see. Yeah. Go ahead. And since they're restoring 3985 yeah. again, um, I rode yeah. behind that locomotive yeah, when it came to Chicago in 2002. So I'm definitely going to get my hands on one of them. Um, so I'm really excited about these again, especially because I, I rode behind the 3985. That was a, a fun trip. Very cool. Yeah. 
Amen on that. I got there's that forty nineteen right there behind Mike and. Uh, oh yeah, with the elephant ears. Are you talking about? I love you can those elephant ears. They you know, look so good. I see it on good. the photo here on my background. I don't know yeah, that's can... beautiful. Oh yeah, I see it. it. Looks beautiful. And then Ken, I sent you a bunch of uh, photos too, in a, the email with the the zip folder, so you can share those oh, nice. as you're going through on here too. No, that's very very cool. Um, you know what? There's something else that we did this week. I want to talk about. Let's see here, and it was that Mike. And Joshua and I, we worked on the layout this week. He didn't let me use the chainsaw. Oh. <laughs> I was really looking forward to Smart. using that. We used a crowbar, though. Yeah. yeah. Don't. And, and a sword. Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> a sword. sword. Wow. All the tools down here, and you used a sword? Well, Don't I you mean, think the sword's a little bit too dramatic? Well, he was <laughs> yelling it around for a while. Well, yeah, that's he, 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 came, he came at me like with a pen, so... You were up here driving a bus on the layout. I was. Tell us about that, because that was right... I wasn't at right before we tore it down, so well, you could still drive on it. So we were talking, I am all about roads on yeah. my railroad, yes. and so I want more roads on your railroad. And so I brought my so, bus okay. and I drove it a little bit on the layout here. And You're trying to lobby me to build more roads. I, I mean, I'm <laughs> somewhere in there. Look, look if I'm going to vote for you this year, we want more roads. Yes, <laughs> more okay. infrastructure. Yeah. Yes, that's it. That's correct. <laughs> and the bus crashed on the floor somewhere. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. We and have you have good insurance that. too. Oh, no. So I hope you have good insurance here. <laughs> and then you were driving it on the. It drove actually better on the gravel roads. I yeah. think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like those roads over there. And I think that you need more roads on your layout, just period. So, yeah, the whole point was to, uh, we elected to, rather than rip up the track on that diorama back there, and relay track on the foam, to rip up the first two-inch layer of foam. And so we, we went over into the shop, we brought it into the shop uh, after trying unsuccessfully to get it apart with a square. Well, for, first we tried to a push a square into yeah, yeah, that, that, it and, that. and break the two pieces apart, and that wouldn't work. No, so, so this is why it comes up, lifts up. So you so guys lifted we, it up. Well, we got a foam saw and tried to cut with the foam saw, so we're and in that the didn't okay. work. We're in the shop, cut it with the saw. Right, yeah. and uh, I was trying to use a sword. Yeah, the sword was kind of cool until he came right at me. All because you didn't want to go up to the garage and get the crowbar. But mm. once he went up to the garage and got the crowbar, it popped up like wow. butter. Amazing. Yes. <laughs> Amazing. The, right, it's the, the moral of the story is the right tool for the right job. Mm. Yes. Bingo. Ha having the right tool is important. <laughs> <laughs> so Amazing. we had a new top piece of foam cut, and we put the top piece of foam onto the old uh, three layers of foam that were left and dropped it into place over there. And so once once we dropped it in, we <sighs> noticed something kind of weird though. Yes. And the foam, the new foam that we bought was what, almost a whole inch? A half inch on one half, side. Half inch on one side, mm -hmm. quarter inch on, on the, the other, other side. side. Yeah. Bigger than the other foam. Well, what I did was after I did finally get, into the, get it into place, I'm going to pull this clip out now because I actually measured it. Um, it's a quarter of an inch and three thirty seconds. So how many thirty seconds of, of an inch is that? How many thirty uh, seconds are in a quarter? More than one. Eight. Okay, so eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's eleven thirty seconds off. Well, code code eighty three rail is only eighty three thousandths, right, of an inch. So taking that into consideration, um, we elected to actually cut the third layer of I cut the third layer of foam off and I'm, yeah. I'll, I'm, this is going to run into what's neat segment eventually so we cut off the third layer of foam made the third layer of foam thinner by the 11 30 seconds of an inch mm -hmm. dropped it in place and now I mean the track everything not everything matches up it's perfectly on the yeah. code 83 mm -hmm. so, so now so yeah. originally on the layout the curve had to be um, suggestible because you had narrow gauge going behind there and you needed enough room. It had to go quicker. So, so the, got, yeah. Correct. So the curve wasn't quite as sweeping, as nice as you could. A lot of the engines that would run over there would either just shut down altogether. Well, they or, would short out on those three-way turnouts once in a while. I know the right. PAs that, uh, anyway, so long all, story short. All that is cut out. The curve is the full 42-inch radius all the way around with a tangent built into it, so it swings gently and then back into the switchyard. Now we just got to figure out what to do with that piece of real estate. 
and so we put some buildings on it this week. Uh, put a grain elevator well, on it and, well, a, and for, a train station. First, you said you wanted a bridge and a creek. Of course. But yeah, so we talked about that on the show last week about the bridge that I was going to put there. Correct, and then I suggested that you have six other bridges with creeks. Yep. <laughs> and why, why not just use you one did. of those? And put There's a lot of bridges we on this We need to lab. have other things on the layout. Okay, so we put a grain elevator. Here's a video clip of one grain elevator, a tall one, and the, um, a train station. Um, here's another video clip of a different kind of a grain elevator. I wrote this down, actually. I should read it. Yeah. No, just that, to make sure that I'm describing it correctly. Um, that was painstaking, you writing all that down. So, This is the most organized show we've ever had when it comes to pre-production in a long time. And it shows. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. The station, uh, okay. Here's another thing, and I want to get into this. We took the same grain elevator and put the train station on the back side of the track. Just to see how it would look aesthetically. Correct. Because as you look at that scene over there, as you look up at the train starts coming at you as you're standing in the aisle. And I, I noticed that the buildings on the front would become a blue a view block of the overall scene as you're looking at the train come through the curve, which I mentioned to you. Correct. But I got a whole other philosophy in this train station okay, conversation. Let, and we talked to Curtis talk, about let's this. Let's talk it out right now. <laughs> okay. Are you guys ready? Which side of the track would you put a train station on and why? To the front of your diorama and or to the rear? And I come up with an answer, but I'm going to ask Curtis first of all, because I asked you the question tonight. What do you think about that? Uh, I like both. <laughs> um, I think if you're going to have more depth of like a downtown, like Main Street scene, I think putting it in front is a good idea because it gives a nice backdrop behind the station. Or if you have the, the station in the foreground and the train, it gives a nice backdrop to the train uh, yes. behind it. Okay. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. I do. Okay. And so my, my big thing is if the train station is on the... So the train station on the edge of the layout in front. That's right. what you said. That, that's with what you said. Yeah, in the okay. front with right. buildings in the back. Agreed. Mm -hmm. yeah. That the buildings would be partially hidden every time the train pulls up. That's true. I think that you should put the station behind the track because you can have all the people on your station that are waiting for the train and there's lots of hustle and bustle there with miniature figures, people coming in and out, cars going. But then when the train comes in, all that stops and all you see is this beautiful train in the front, you know, glistening and really just that's the focal point of what we want a railroad to be. I have no woes against you putting maybe another building in there somewhere to partially hide the train because that's a huge thing for mm -hmm. us, you know. Having the train go through a, trun a tunnel or having it go through a part where you don't see it and you're wondering right. and anticipating. Forested area or co rock. Correct. Whether it's a bunch of trees or if it's yeah. a rock wall or mm -hmm. a tunnel or whatever. That's something that the eye catches, and we're anticipating seeing where that train's going to come out. You don't always know. Okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I think mm -hmm. what Josh is saying is what I would have originally chosen, but it's more of the the uh, cliche train set. Correct. Way to do it, but I like parking lots, and I like I, people. I would agree. With, what, what do you, you think? Know, so I would think that, agree with you with the same thing there. It's that you could have more, since you emphasize the train roads station on the that, back, in the on back, back right. there, right. Right. then the, 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 the scene the is the people, yes. the cars, this, the, and then the, the scene is just only obstructed by the train. The train? Because with the so train station on the front, part of the scene of the activity on the platform is blocked it's by the train station. Right. But, okay, gotcha. yeah. but it should be blocked because you can't see those people move because those people never right. really move. But the anticipation that's in your head of well, people you need entering to have them in passive poses. Okay, I'm going to run this video clip where I put a station in front and in the back on the same clip. 44 seconds as I discuss this. And check this out. I'm looking at the clock. <laughs> so we put the train station in the front towards the edge. And here's my philosophy on that. It comes from the Midwest Valley Modelers layout, which you could stand on from both sides. Not the public, but we could, and mm -hmm. we did. Right. And we had a train station on that <coughs> line. If you put a train mm -hmm. station towards uh, the front, you can see the parking lot. You can see all the people on the platforms on either side of the station. You've got the rear detail of the station. The train pulls into the scene, and when the train pulls into the scene, it doesn't block the station. It doesn't block the people. The train is a background prop to the station. Right? Mm -hmm. If you put a train station on the back side of the tracks right. and the train pulls up, now all those people at 
Joshua just described that you see, it's all blocked by the train. Mm -hmm. So it's scenery, road, whatever, track, train, all the pedestrians, all the pretty lighting, everything you just did is now being blocked by the superliners and probably part of the station. And so that was the philosophy, and I, I probably talked through uh, longer than I was supposed to on that clip. You're way longer than 44 seconds. Did I really? Yeah, it's like way longer. It couldn't have been. Anyway, I hope it's right, because the next clip is going to throw everything I said just out the window. And okay? go. And that is this Rock Island station that we got. This 3D, JP3D mm. gave us yeah, this, or yeah. sold me that Rock yes. Island station for 400 and something dollars. We put that on the layout right here in front, and it literally became a wall. You might as well put the backdrop right in front of the module. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a nice station, don't get me wrong, but there, you ain't seeing no trains, you're not seeing buildings or anything else on the backside of this three-story tall, this great big, right. This, right. this thing, this beautiful building. So that's why I don't think there's a right answer. I, I fully intended on closing this deal tonight, Your Honor, and I knew what the answer was, but I still don't. <laughs> Guilty. 30 days. <laughs> that was two pages. <laughs> well, it's a work in progress just like everything else. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, yeah. So I, 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 I took Mike and Mike's minivan and I got some lumber and now I'm building more of the Fountain City Railroad. Mm -hmm. I'm super excited. I am too. I'm yeah. glad to see you getting stuff done. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait for you guys to come I over. can't wait to come down there. You just, you live right there. You're so close to Holly's mom. We can just come down there, hang out with you. Why not? Okay. Why can't we just shoot a show on your front porch? I don't In see the garage. Can. Okay, yeah. we got all that, all that equipment. Let's start getting used to using it because we need to get, we need wait, to get back on the road a little bit. We're, mm -hmm. we're not used to using it? No, we haven't used that in a long time. Last show we did was what? I don't even know, Dejler, Nebraska, or where was it? Where we were actually on the road recording a show. Okay. When yeah. did we do that last? I don't, I don't remember. About two years ago, I think. Yeah. Okay. Three, four, seven. All right, so um, I'm thinking about buying some GP35s, Broadway Limiteds. What do you think? I think that's a great idea. We've got GP30s and GP35s. You do. You've got um, that 30 I could mix in, and they've got beacons on them. Yeah, the beacons oh, are on there. Yeah, yeah and the then um, lots of new road names. Um, and these newer runs of 30s and 35s, um, starting off just with the, the 30s, we got the Santa Fe, we've got the CV and Q, and the Chinese Red, but we've also got some really early merger style with the patched numbers. Um, like in the 70s, when Burlington Northern was formed. Um, and when uh, they still had the paint of the original Burlington, Great Northern and stuff, they had all the different road numbers, but they ended up patching them before they finally repainted them. Um, so we've done that with a couple of different offerings. We've got a Burlington Northern patched version with the Chinese red Burlington paint scheme. Um, and we've got a bunch of other paint schemes too that we'll, um, that I'll mention in the, in the, for the 35s. So we got some patched ones there too. Um, but we got Chesapeake and Ohio, we've got Milwaukee Road, we've got the Redding um, with the appropriate uh, size fuel tank for the Redding ones. Um, we've got Southern Pacific with the full light package. I know, Ken, you liked the GP35s with the light package um, on that Southern Pacific unit that you oh, had. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, I showed the video last week. I'm probably yeah. showing it right now for those who haven't seen it. Check it out. It's pretty cool. I think you got to hit F24 to get the red light to go on, but all the CVs are there. Yeah, nice. it's awesome. Great looking model. Um, and plus, we've got two fantasy schemes in the GP30s. We've got the U.S. Air Force fantasy scheme, yes. which is really cool. Yeah, and then we've neat. also got the U.S. Army fantasy scheme, and that Army one is a Train World exclusive, so yeah, you could get that through them. Cool. Tonight, we're running some Broadway Limited M1s in front of camera number two. Ooh, yep. That's a very uh, nice process nice. there. Yes. Yes. And they are weathered. It's a good-looking consist, mm -hmm. too. Yeah, it sure is. It's the it? appropriate consist. It's probably a mix of inner mountain. It's stuff that I've picked up through the years. AccuRail. Um, a whole mix of stuff in there. A lot of uh, train miniatures, I think, they made uh, those really nice cars. Yeah, those mm -hmm. are a lot of really nice mm -hmm. older A few yeah, of them are, are cars that I've had from the Midwest Valley Modelers days. You can't see the car coming wow. up on that C&O car, but on the other side is that passenger ride in the box car. And I always yeah. wondered where he was going. I used him in that cornfield shot that we ran back in 1988 or 89 uh, in the uh, NMRA Bulletin, our, our Rail Model Journal. And the whole phrase was, where's this guy going? Mm -hmm. I don't know. He's still here on the layout running around in circles. <laughs> That's right. That you made yeah. another quote in December 2015 of your whole background philosophy of how you got started in this whole... Yeah, how to make a career in model rarity. Yeah. Well, we could just ask him that now because he's doing it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. 
That's awesome. Uh, um, yeah, and then we got the 35s, uh, too. We got Santa Fe. We got the Chessy scheme. Uh, we also got the CSX patched version. So, again, when uh, CSX was formed, um, they got the patched versions of that. Um, we've also got Canadian Pacific um, and that maroon and uh, uh, silver scheme. Uh, and then we've got Chicago Northwestern. Um, and then we've also got Conway Scenic uh, number 216. Um, that's the locomotive we actually recorded the sounds of the GP35s from um, up in Conway. We recorded about uh, this time last year, actually, and uh, we were able to go up there and record it. And uh, they are actually, that's a Conway Scenic exclusive. So for any of you Conway Scenic fans out there um, that want that GP35 as it appears today, um, that you could purchase it through them. You just go to their website or give them a call um, and get your order in through there. Um, we've got the Great Northern, and then we've got the Burlington Northern patch of the Great Northern units. So they have the um, Simplified Empire Builder scheme, um, and they've got the patch uh, number on there as well. Um, and then uh, Smokebox Graphics, um, who helps with a lot of our artwork and stuff on our website, um, they have a Tuscola and Saginaw Bay um, GP35. Um, that's an exclusive through them, and you can purchase that there too. Um, of course, Paragon 4 Sounds, and then, of course, Stealth Models, too. So whichever one you prefer. Um, and as with all of our Stealth Models, the speaker is in, uh, already installed, so you can just plug and play, and you'll be good to go. Um, so make sure you get your orders in, because those order deadlines will be coming up this summer, um, early June, June 6th, to be exact. Um, so make sure you get yours um, in as soon as you can, because we got a lot of people that loved the 30s and 35s. The last time we did those run, they sold out very quick. Um, so if you're looking to add more, now is the time to get your order in. I'm not arguing with that. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> hey, Mikey, look at you tonight. What do you bring? Well, I got some more stuff from uh, Bob Johnson at Master Built Models. Bob Johnson. Man, look I his. hear his name a lot on this show. Yeah. He's the guy that sent the Corvettes that I showed last week, and I forgot. Oh, I saw I one of those on the road this week, and yeah. I thought about you. <laughs> yeah. So uh, these are Ford trucks from Burkina, and uh, the uh, three on the right are Ford CLT 9000s. I was going to ask, are they 9000s? Yes, they are. They are. Uh, and the, both of these are appropriate for my uh, mid to late 70s modeling era. Um, and uh, these are the uh, LT, uh, Ford LTL trucks. Uh, those started around uh, 76 or so. Wow. So a conventional That's cab. the same cab as the white metal one we've been isn't it? Uh, I don't know. The, the white metal one front right end? here? No, the other no, one. No, the other one. The other one. Let me see the front grill. It's a Ford. Yeah. Oh, it's same so front, close. same yeah. everything. What was it? Alloy Forms is the one dump truck that we've been working on, the Ford LNT. Oh, the LNT. Yeah. yeah, those were uh, earlier, uh, okay. a little earlier, 70s. That's such a that's such but a then beautiful. They, yeah, they, cr they continued making those for a long time with square headlights and stuff. Man, those I think are they're just a little breathtaking, smaller than though. Those. The paintwork is amazing. Yeah, yeah, the graphics are just yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, the the only complaint I, I've heard online, not really a complaint, but criticism of, of these cabs is the uh, front wheels. The tread is way too narrow. And I, this one sh shows the way it came from the factory, and I agree with that. I put new axles in these two and spread the front wheels out to where they were even with the bottom of the cab. And I, I think it looks a lot better. Yeah, um, I can tell a big difference. So I, I didn't... I did this right before I came over here. We've been babysitting our granddaughter all day. I didn't have time to really do anything <laughs> other than that, but uh, so I didn't have time to measure it or you know to see if it what the scale actually was. But I just moved them out to where I thought they they looked the best. And the the one other thing is the fifth wheel sits a little too high, but uh, you know if you can't fix that, you're not much of a modeler, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, you know, oh, that's I mean, easy fix. Uh, maybe their trailers will match those. I, I don't know. I don't even know if they're they're making trailers, but uh, that's certainly an easy fix if you're just going to mo model the the cabs, you know, without a trailer. So uh, anyway, these are just more amazing models coming out from uh, Burkina PCX87. I, I think they're connected with ISO, which also makes like 143rd models. I think. Uh, I'm I'm not sure, but uh, they're really kicking butt over there in Europe with these American models with with cars too. So uh, 
I think there's some more trucks coming out. Uh, nice. That mm -hmm. Bob's going to send me some samples of those too. So. So what does Bob do? Is he distributor? Does he have yeah. an online store? How, yeah, who is Bob Johnson? Tell me about. You've said it. Uh, you've said it a million times on the show. A, he always comes to our RPM. In he, St. Does. Louis. he does. Yeah, so he I've seen him up. then. I've yes, met him. Met okay. Him, yeah. All right. And uh, but he he is he the gentleman who sold me the fire trucks? Remember you had know. fire trucks on the table one time? Probably. Really beautiful detail. Yeah. I don't know where they are. But uh, he, yeah, he he runs master built models. Okay. In, uh, down in Texas, and he he's a distributor, I guess. I don't know, but he gets he gets all these new models coming in before anybody else that I know. Do you know? And does he have a website that someone can just, go to? Just uh, masterbuiltmodels.com, but it's. It's B I L T Master Build. It's not with there's no U in it. So it's okay. Master B I L T Models dot com. Nice. So uh, anyway, yeah, he's Bob. Bob's really been taking care of me with these vehicles. That's so, pretty nice. Yeah, thanks they're, thanks they're again, buddy. Nice. Yeah, we love to show. I them love off. the eye candy. I love yeah. looking at them. I, I do. I've heard the Burkina all the time, but I've never really seen them <laughs> this close. Yeah, <laughs> that yeah. Type of thing. That has Now. Um, Daniel, you've brought some Broadway limited locomotives tonight that are on the table, and I think one of them's an M1. Why don't you tell us what the story is on these beautifully weathered models? Yes, yeah, so actually, well, first off, they're not mine. They're my buddy Joey Gento, Touch of the Brush Model Weathering, and the Boston Mountain, Mountain Valley Model Railroad Association. Give a shout out to all you guys out there. Hey, Joey. Hey, Joey. Um, but anyway, so I have been uh, cordially assigned, well, actually not assigned, volunteered, to take on a massive 35 different locomotive repair project, DCC upgrades for him and two of his other friends in the club. But 35 of them? 35 mm -hmm. total. Not 35 Broadway Limiteds, but the point is, okay, these were two okay. of them out of the batch. And he's doing right, them right. free. Right. Yeah. You're doing them for free? They're exchanging. Yeah, yes. we're just bartering, you know, some work here and there, mm -hmm. you know. But anyway, so these are, I believe, these part of uh, Joey's late friend, Darius, uh, who has since passed oh, yeah. away, uh, collection, but then his family had dubbed him. So anyways, we've got two Broadway Limited Steams. The one is a Redding 484 Northern, the T1 with the Paragon 3, custom weathered. And then we got a Pennsylvania M1A, M1, yeah, M1A 4A2 uh, Mountain. Yes. custom weather wow. and now what i was able to do is uh fix them up for what the problems mm. were persisted and they run like clockwork uh, wow. the smoke right. unit in the m1a i mean it just looks like the real thing and now there are ways to adjust i guess the cvs on the smoke unit because as we're sitting idle over there i might have to change the idle set point up to where the fans may be pushing a little bit more out because otherwise the smoke's just going to sit and simmer but it looks like that you know it's just sitting there idling waiting for you know the outbound nice. signal to yeah. say a green and tell the crew head on out highball the main but these are phenomenal models, and these are also going to be part of his Pennsylvania Reading Industrial Division. So we're starting up with that. But uh, yeah, that's what you can do if you know how to weather, you know, or basically, you know, just put a little bit of dirt grime here and there like you did on yours, Ken. But yeah. I mean, Joey, or I guess Darius, or whoever weathered them, uh, Joey can correct me who did. Maybe he did some of it, but I mean, those, they look like yeah, they look models as they were back in the time Fantastic. frame that they ran. Yeah. That's so absolutely. that's what I got going on there. Steve Mantia. You've got bunny ears on the table. Hold on. What? Happy birthday, <laughs> that guy on that show there. That guy, that that guy on the uh, what's, that guy on that that show, what's that's neat it. show. That's it. <laughs> you know? I bet Curtis has seen you on that show. I, it's on I've that heard you've been on that show. I've Is been it on that show. Something? Yes. You're like a famous person. I, I'm, I'm, I'm like a famous person. That's Not right. really a famous person. I was at the Museum of Transport last night for the train show. I, yes. I, I and see you have all your eggs in the basket. Yes, too, I do. So I try to get them good. all that's, there. That's very good. The, guy, like the, guy came, the guy came up to me at the show and said, hey, I'm supposed to come up to you and say I've seen you on the show. <laughs> so, you know, I felt, felt special for there's a little bit. There's six of us that. and there's six eggs, and I'm just hoping there's candy in each egg. No, oh, that's <laughs> it. Oh, so, no. <laughs> no? How about some ground throws? No, <laughs> Railroad <laughs> spikes. Yeah, I love it. Coal. Oh. Couplers. <laughs> Rail joiners? <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Who knows? I know. That's a perfect show. What's the right size stocking stuffer? No, not tonight, but I'm no. just saying, what's that one small thing? Well, uh, yeah, it'll fit in the back It's got to fit car. in an egg. Uh-oh. Mm. Uh-oh. Well, what can? A $500 bill. <laughs> oh, listen to you. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was yeah, going to say one of those 3D printed models of Denny. I, that won't fit mm -hmm. in there, but this will fit a $500 bill very nicely. Uh, then yeah. we can oh. buy a bunch of those. Okay. Yeah, well, sounds good. Daniel, let me go ahead and have one. 
you know, so <laughs> this, oh, no, I'm broke. <laughs> well, you're talking about you could buy some locomotives, so I figured, you know. And these are Lionel, right? Not MTH. What's locomotives? This is the MTH, and this one, this is Lionel with their Easter that standpoint. And I know there's other people out there who enjoy when I bring the uh, M and M cars on oh, for yeah. that. So, I uh, love the colorful mm -hmm. uh, things uh, that are just make believe. You might say, yes. Um, you know, that goes to the uh, GP35, so he was talking about with the military, the one with the teeth on it. Yeah. But the T1 that they made in N scale, they make one for Christmas, is a little blue and white snowy steam locomotive. It's really cute. Yeah. It's beautiful. And there was another, uh, the other T1 was painted what? What was the other one? Uh, the, the Conrail fantasy scheme, yeah, which yeah, was yeah, a, yeah. a concept that I guess they were looking into doing, like a Conrail steam program of some sort. But I guess it never came to fruition, and so that was just a, a mock-up drawing. But we've made that into a fantasy scheme. But yeah, fantasy schemes are cool, man. They can be really fun to have. Very definitely, nice. definitely, definitely one, so. One thing I was also going to say, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like that when the Chessie system was formed, that they had a Reading T1, a part of their steam program that they were trying to spearhead. I believe it was, uh, was it 2101 or 2102 that suffered? Yeah, 20, 2101, and it was for the Chessie Safety Express. All right. Um, they used uh, CNO 614, the Greenbrier Northern, um, as one of the other locomotives, right. too, for that. Yeah, yeah. so they, they interchanged it, too. Um, all of that. And then the other T1 uh, is being restored. I don't remember the number off the top of my head. 2102, I think. Yeah, for AFT 250, um, which is, I guess, for the 250th anniversary or birthday of the, of the United States. But also, I think it's the 50th anniversary of the time the Freedom Train, the 7576 yes. Freedom right. Train. Yes. Right. Yes. Oh my so gosh. that'll be cool to see when that's all done. Yeah, it will be. What a good time to be making that locomotive. Oh my gosh, you need the ad photo where it's a rail fan run by with all the people on either side of the track taking pictures. Oh wow, you know how hard yeah. that shot is to get and pull off? <laughs> That's fun. Rock and roll. Sounds like a road trip to it's, us. It's all about super detailing. A lot of people, I mean, I know what we're doing down here. Um, well, we are, we are prototype modelers, so it's about yeah. the detail. And if you're laying turnouts and laying track, I want to talk about something. I got a phone call this week. Uh-oh. And it wasn't from no, Ghostbusters. Jeff, Jeff Otto <laughs> is up to something amazing. And it took me a minute to figure it out. But I've hand laid track on the Midwest Valley Modelers layout. I laid those number 20 curved crossovers. Ooh. And they worked. And we tested them with brass big boys just to make sure. Because those were arc welders if they shorted out. So they did work. Right. But the biggest thing was a lot of times when I'm soldering my switch points together, i got to put that piece of metal in between solder it just right, make sure it's gauged, and then of course flip it back and forth, get my NMRA gauge in there just to make sure the gauge is right between the rail and the switch points on the backside. And some of these freight cars have got wider wheels on them. Right. Well, Jeff Otto's got these, uh, these amazing uh, turnout, the Throw. pieces. Yes, yeah. the ground throws. I gotta talk about these throw bars because what they are is an exact scale replica of an actual throw bar from an actual switch wow in every way all the way around wow they were designed in cad they got all the bolt structure and they snap in place he's got a video on his website where he shows that these snap onto the switch points no soldering no glue it's designed with a little snap that clicks and holds whatever rail you're using and you can order them for code 55 code 70 code 83 rail nice okay so this is pretty amazing, but and you're going to see all of this. This is this is his big thing now. Is when you lay his strip of ties down, that are all going to be pre-cut. All the ties for a number six, a number eight, a number ten. It can be designed to any turnout that you want. With the tie plates, right? Then that's the magic yeah. of this. I hope he emailed me the pictures because I saw him last night. You've got the tie plates for the entire turnout, but they're all ready together. It's all literally etched. So wow. for each length part of rail on the turnout, all the tie plates are already there. You don't right. have to space them. You don't do them individually. They've got electrical little things that come down, spikes so you can get the power, right? Mm -hmm. They fit under the frog. They fit under every part of the turnout, and it actually looks right. So you, you pre-paint this. You stain your ties. You pre-paint your frogs and the plates mm -hmm. and then you assemble it all together with wow. the turnout and it's a pretty amazing system that he's doing right now he's also got the straight track so if you wanted and he showed that off in the show i think when he was on skype the last time mm -hmm. he shared with us 
the tie plates. Yeah, well, he had some he, of that at crossings. the RPM that we yeah. saw there. Yeah, that was he very, those, very yeah. cool. His crossovers, he's got, you know, the crossovers mm -hmm. where the trains go yep. like this across each other. Those have got the plates right. underneath them and all, all the, the details. Bolt structures along the edge. So, I mean, if you want absolutely scale track and you want to take the time to do it, but now this is the diorama guy. This is the guy that's yeah. got all of it laid out. Check it out, OHR Track Supply, Oak Hill Model Railroad Track Supply. I can't supply. wait for him to actually be here on the show to show us all the stuff in person. Look at all the stuff we've shown in the past. The I triple know. crossovers, all those different kind of turnouts that he had available. Yep. I probably have just now hit you with at least 16 or 18 photographs while I was talking. Because he's got so much amazing stuff that he's made to try to make... I mean, no manufacturer is going to create some of the crossovers like he makes. Well, and it's every, impossible. Time, every time we talk to him, he's coming up with something new, new. and something more inventive, and it's just amazing. This is a culmination of going on almost seven years now of all this yeah. going together yep. to coming to the point where you can buy the turnout kit or you can buy them already built. Yep. He'll build them mm -hmm. for you. Yeah. I, I've seen some yeah. of the really cool stuff that he's done with the turn in the middle of all the tracks with it. I mean, yeah, yeah. he and does amazing custom work. This, that's not an advertisement. This is a way to get better track. This is a way to have super detailed, yeah. and this is a place to get it, and he's the only one that's doing it. Absolutely. So check it out. I know, right? I was excited. I'm thinking about this across the window here because I got to get rid of all those three-way rail <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Well, even I have to back out of the way now. Oh my God. Well, just, wait a minute. Oh. P P He's just one with two erasers. Maybe I should get a laser. Hey, okay, Josh. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> what a laser I mean. pointer. Yeah. Oh, I can't see me yeah. a laser yeah, this time. I'll be blinded now. <laughs> all right. So, Curtis, I would love to have you here in St. Louis with us. I'm coming to the St. Louis RPM this year. Sweet. Right. Sweet. We'll, we'll, nice. Nice. we'll save a spot yeah. for you right here. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Oh, we have got a spot for you. Oh, yeah. You know, I heard Rapido's running around the country on a bus. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. It, it, a bus well, tour? It, it was a, a bus tour? tour? Well, it was a great American bus tour, and the bus broke down. Oh, I was going to say, hopefully it doesn't end up like Joshua doesn't end up on the floor. But. Right, 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 right. <laughs> okay, so, so anyway, so, they're so, still doing the tour. So, so now it's the Great American Van Tour. So they got they rented some other uh, equipment to transport their stuff, yeah. and the, so they're still and they're going to be in St. Louis this weekend. Yeah, okay. yeah tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So if if everything works out right at the end of this show, I am hoping to have at least a little interaction with the boys from Rapido. Because you guys all know, I have uh, I've, I've purchased a few models recently, and a lot of a few of them are Rapido models. Yeah, yeah. and I've been very impressed. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. I can't wait to talk about. <laughs> this is, you got to point that out. I, can't, I know, but it's still the I can't scary. wait to talk about that um, that streamlined Amtrak train. We're not talking about that right now. No, no, but Rapido. No, made we're not it. talking about that right now. <laughs> okay. Maybe for another show. It's, yeah. it's, yeah, it's... Hey, by the way, give me that pencil. So, okay, no, Curtis, <laughs> save me here. What else you got that you want to talk about before we disappear tonight on you? Uh, we have, uh, speaking of passenger cars and passenger oh, trains, we've wow. got heavyweight yeah. combines and heavyweight business cars coming. Yes. Um, in HO skill, we've got, of course, the era-specific uh, Pennsylvania Railroad versions um, of the PB-70. Um, and, of course, the uh, detailed versions of the Z74D um, business cars, observation cars. So there's three different versions of that, the 30s, 40s, and 50s scheme. You can find that available on our website, and you can pre-order it through your dealers now. Uh, but we also announced uh, last week that we're doing um, some alternative uh, paint schemes and road names for those based off of the PRR design. So we, for the combines, we've got the Santa Fe. We've got uh, Baltimore and Ohio. We've got Chesapeake and Ohio. Uh, Canadian National, uh, Chicago, or excuse me, uh, Norfolk and Western, uh, Northern Pacific, and then of course we got um, Christmas schemes for mm. the holiday time. Um, and then we've also got the unlettered version, which is in Pullman Green. So mm. if you want to add any decals to it, you can do that as well. And then for the um, business cars, we've got Santa Fe, we've got C&O, uh, Canadian National, um, CSX in the uh, business train paint scheme. Um, that they have for like the Santa train and stuff like that in Kentucky. Um, so we've got that paint scheme, Norfolk and Western, Northern Pacific, New York Central, Southern Pacific, Union Pacific, and Christmas. And uh, we have uh, five car sets offered in those um, as well for C&O, uh, Northern Pacific, uh, Christmas, and uh, Canadian National. And that includes a combine, an observation car, and three coaches. It would be Christmas and, for me if you made some Mopac stuff. Yeah. 
So oh, we've, like, we've made some OPAC stuff in the oh, past. We're looking and I, to and make I more. own all those, but I want more. <laughs> more. <laughs> more. <laughs> what Mopac stuff are you looking for? <clears throat> Anything that you can put out there passenger car wise. Passenger car wise. Yes. Okay. Yes. Our, our really, I mean anything. I'll take steam engines. I'll take, yeah, I'm pretty much versatile. Whatever. Got it. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Actually, uh, that's a true story. The AHM back in the 70s mm -hmm. made a Mopac consist of cars seven or eight cars in the big box set yeah that was hot and yeah. I, there was a lot of people around here that had those boy if i can get my hands on some of those you can still find those check ebay mm -hmm. no check the internet uh, no no oh, okay. i don't ebay All right back then they were only 200 dollars for the set too that was a pretty good deal yeah mm. now, now that's $2, but these things he's talking about are super detailed these are mm -hmm. these are the tricked out business cars this is plastic brass once again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that and they have LED sense. lighting, and you can have individually controlled uh, lights. So there's the interior light, there's the marker and tail lights, and then we've also got, um, per the prototype, uh, platform observation uh, lights oh, on top, too, as well. Cool. Very All cool. of which you can individually control. We're going to have a little uh, magnet strip that you can just swipe over the roof of the car. Um, and you'll be able to uh, change them that way. I mean, they're just Sweet. every every hurdle that they hit, they just go right over it and mm -hmm. go to the next one. It's <laughs> That's so it. awesome. <laughs> That's absolutely yeah. It. All right, Curtis. Um, yes, sir. I need you back in St. Louis. Did I already say that? I want yeah, you R here. R I want R you. Yes. I want to yeah. hang out with you. I don't want to just hang up on Skype and oh, you're gone. I want us to be able to run some trains together down here. Patience. Well, th well, this summer when I come to uh, when I come to St. Louis for the uh, RPM, I'll I'll see if I have enough s space in my suitcase to bring some uh, Ooh, yeah. some of my models yeah. up there and we can oh. have some fun. I, I, I like that silver one right there in HO scale. That's pretty. That is gorgeous. <laughs> that's that. That's that. Beautiful. Yeah, thirty nine seventy. You know how pretty those are. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. I, I got to go spend thirty bucks to become uh, mm -hmm. yeah. a member. Yeah, me yes. too. Yeah. <laughs> right like behind that. you. Bring some of the UP passenger cars to go behind it, or freight too, because those were freight locomotives as well. Um, and those are going to be cool. The 3977s got the polished rods, um, yeah, just like how it is very, in the museum in North cool. Platte. So those will be awesome, awesome things. Oh, and I, I forgot too, we've got um, 060 steam switchers coming out ah. too, the, oh. the B6 um, SB um, coming out for Pennsylvania Railroad modelers too. And, and these are cool because. We were able to collaborate with the um, Pennsylvania Railroad Technical and Historical Society. Um, so they provided us with a ton of uh, not only just designs of the locomotives, but the actual like technical details as to what made them stand out between the B6 SB and the other B6 class locomotives. Um, and these were really commonly found all over the Pennsylvania Railroad system. They had 238 of these on their wow. roster. Um, so they were in passenger yards, freight yards, sometimes on branch line duty. Um, so these are going to be perfect for your layout if you've got a, a steam or, or even transitional era uh, model railroad and you want to add some um, uh, unique small steam switchers. And we've never done steam switchers before, so this is a really unique opportunity. If these sell well, we might consider looking into other uh, road-specific steam switchers um, besides just the, the USRA ones before. Um, we've looked into seeing about doing like Union Pacific or Southern Pacific, Missouri Pacific, Joshua, yes. and a few <laughs> others there too. Uh, so we're, we're looking at all of that, but lots of different um, Pennsylvania Railroad paint schemes for these B6s. We've got the post-war appearance. we got the pre-war appearance. we got the um, Futura lettering, which is a little bit spaced out um, uh, version of the font on the tender. And of course, we got unlettered. So if you want to add your own uh, decals to it or um, add any um, specific um, details to it, you can do that. Um, and then we've got a couple of other exclusives too. We've got um, tr a Train World exclusive for the Long Island Railroad um, of the B6. And then we've also got the Pennsylvania oh, Reading Seashore yeah. Lines version. And that is a Hobby Time exclusive. And some people were asking us online about where can they go order that. So if you contact your dealer, ask them if they order through Hobby Time. And if they do, you'll be able to purchase your order in um, for that there. So that's, a, again, a Hobby Time exclusive. Um, they're a distributor, so make sure that you ask your local hobby shop, ask your dealer if uh, they order through Hobby Time. And if they do, you'll be able to get it. Great. That's awesome. Nice. I cannot believe the amount of stuff that you guys are making. Yeah. I can't believe the amount of stuff that everybody is in general is making. Look at the stuff that the Bachman's making. All the announcements, Athern and Rapido and all the various manufacturers right now, there is so much product on the market. And you know what it's selling? So yeah. The hobby is alive. <laughs> 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 
This yeah. is the best hobby in the world sure with some is. of the best people in it. We're going to take our NCE Pro Cab here. Yep. And run some trains. We are going to because the layout runs tonight. We got everything going. Thanks for running camera for us tonight, Richard. You got to hear every word that they said tonight. You got oh, you yeah. hooked up. I saw. So I wrote. Uh, yeah. What do you see? Yeah. What? Remember that note that I wrote you on here? Mm -hmm. Oh, you yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, um, I, I'm totally forgetting that. Oh, I remembered it five wow. times during the show. Uh -huh. This yes. is a gift from Curtis to you because, well, because you liked it. and I did I didn't, like it. I, did, it I couldn't give it to you until I had permission. It's going to go great <laughs> with my thunder and lightning mm -hmm. on my layout. So, yes. Thank you very much. And it operates. I appreciate it. It's it talks. Very, it's very impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys are awesome. Thank you very much. And I'll send, send you some video when I get it on the layout mm -hmm. here in the next five years or so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you're going to enjoy it. So have fun with it. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll love to see the video when that's all put up and yes, installed. Yes, absolutely. So. Make sure you check out Model Road Hobbyist Magazine's What's Neat uh, video that we run every single month. That one just came out. There's amazing club in that one, uh, the Great Big Chicago Club up there. I just watched March's Did you see that? episode. That was great. Yes. Okay. It was just super cool. To March. See. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. March. I know. That's yeah, yeah, what yeah, I just yeah. said. I just watched March, and it was great. George and does a door, the, George Bogatuck paints the, backdrops. The, yeah, the mountains are pretty right? neat. Right. Yeah, I remember going to that did layout. You see that how, was a great did layout. you see how proud that guy was when I asked him, what do you power this layout with? That's right. And he said, we <laughs> use. Uh-huh. Yes. He said it out loud. And I just I just loved it when the right. camera was rolling. Big he smile. was smiling. Right. Yes, he was. And then he told us about the 10-gauge wire and all the heavy wiring that they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But these clubs love this system because it's intuitive and all the members can easily use yeah. them. Mm -hmm. And that's, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that's why we like it because it simply works. When mm -hmm. I want to run a train, I can do it. And that's what we're going to do right that's now. Right. Ready, set, Here, go. This. Be sure to hit subscribe, like. Hit subscribe, hit like, love us on YouTube, check us out on Facebook. Yeah, leave a comment. Show us what you're doing on Facebook. That's why it's there. Send us videos and stuff like that. And hey, we need a pack that next time we have an M&M train. I have to have M&M's in it. M&M's need to be in there. Yeah, there should be in there. Yeah, there should be. I keep those at home. There's a bag over here. We'll get into it. Curtis, thanks for being here tonight. Thank you for having me, guys. All right, guys. Let's go run some trains. Happy birthday. <laughs> 53 minutes. That was fun. Man, that oh, was it's going to be longer than that if we have show. if we get the interview with Rapido, yeah, it's going to be a long. All right, we need to edit. It'll be out Wednesday. We need a screen. It's got to be out by in a timely manner because of has his to announcement be out after Monday. Okay. Well, I make the announcement in the March video too about the conductors club, I think. Or no, that was yeah, a video. Yes. Okay, so that was good. All right, wreck and roll. We need a thumbnail. Where and everyone else is ready but you. <laughs> okay, ready, set, camera number one, smile. <laughs> okay, good, we have that. So now we're sitting with Jordan Smith from Rapido Models out of beautiful Canada. Yes, thank you. You're in St. Louis for a bus tour. Yep. Welcome uh, to... A bus tour without a bus. Welcome to the set of the What's Neat show on Thank this you. beautiful, sunny Sunday afternoon. I know, we could have asked for a better day to be yeah, here. I know, right? And we're going to do a photo shoot after this. Yes, that's absolutely, absolutely right. Because all of the models that you're about to see now, and there are some beautiful models on the table. I know, right, Mike? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Drooling over He's that got that pond. bus right in front <laughs> yeah, of him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I like that Jeep 35. I know, that's pretty neat, too. So, Jordan, why don't you uh, tell us about your bus tour and yep. uh, about you're going across the country, and then we'll talk about your models. Excellent. So, yeah, we're, we're on a bus tour. Uh, it was supposed to be with a bus. We bought a, another new look bus. We have another one that's already back in Toronto we've had for several years now. Um, so we bought this bus in California, and we're, the plan was we were going to drive it all the way back from Los Angeles to Toronto, which is uh, almost two weeks. And we got down to the bus last uh, Sunday, I guess it was, and found out that the motor was blown. Um, we're not exactly sure how that happened. We've got some thoughts on that. But uh, somehow the, uh, the engine is full of sand or something has gummed up the, the whole motor. So uh, it's blown. It needs a new motor. So unfortunately, it couldn't, uh, couldn't be here with, with us on the trip. But the saving grace was that <laughs> we found out very quickly after our first stop in Phoenix uh, last week is that if we'd had the bus, we never would have made any of our stops on time because uh, it just can't drive fast enough to uh, to make the schedule. What's the top so, speed of that bus? 
Uh, 70 or 75 miles an hour, I believe. Well, and wait a minute think, now. Uh, How fast are y'all driving in that van? Uh, J J <laughs> Jason was driving for the first few days, and uh, he was driving a little bit faster than that. Okay. So uh, It's like 90 yeah. in Canada hmm. to drive, right? Is that right? Is kilometers that an hour. Oh, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, kilometers an hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, we've got uh, we're on the tour. We've got our, our our Chrysler minivan as a replacement, and we've been uh, we've had a we had a great time meeting uh, a number of clubs and shops along the way. We were in Phoenix. Uh, we were in Berlin, just south of Albuquerque. Uh, we were in Dallas, then Oklahoma City. Uh, we were in Kansas City yesterday. We we're in St. Louis today. We're at the uh, St. Charles uh, uh, Model Railroad Club. Mm -hmm. we're, then we're off to Chicago for a couple of days and back to. Back to Toronto after a visit in uh, Flint later in the week. Nice. So it's cool. it's been a very very busy trip, but it's been great. Uh, we're meeting lots of people along the way. It's uh, something we don't get always get to do. So. Wow. And then you got Rocky Mountain coming up, don't you? You yeah, still have to do weeks. the train show circuit. Yep. Do you yep. guys do so, the great, uh, world's greatest hobby? Do you help with that? We do, we're not on that tour, but okay. we are at the the Rocky Mountain train show, which is in uh, two weeks from today, actually. Yeah. Uh, in in Denver, and then we're at Super Train in Calgary at the I believe that's the third week of April that's coming up. So I'll be there uh, on that uh, for that particular show. So we've got a very busy schedule this spring. That's that's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Now, Jordan, did you like toy model trains when you were young? Is oh, this like the course. dream job thing? Oh, yeah. Is yeah. that right? I, okay. uh, I, I, I've been doing this since I was six or seven. <laughs> okay. um, I started at uh, George's Trains up in, in Toronto back in 2002. And I worked uh, there for Quite a long time, uh, kind of part time. Worked at a hospital for a while in Toronto, and then uh, I joined Rapido in 2016. Nice. It's been a little over eight years now. So it's been wow. uh, fantastic. That's awesome. So we've got a lot of beautiful outdoor photography mm -hmm. that we're going to shoot of these models. Do you want to talk about some of these models that you brought? Absolutely. So I've got a few of the models that we've uh, brought on the tour here. Uh, right up front, uh, actually, let's start from the far side. There, we've got our latest uh, version of our HO scale new look buses. This is the sort of semi suburban version. We've announced both uh, the transit versions, a new run of those, plus the uh, the Suburbans, uh, which don't have the rear door. They have the, the high back seats, the reclining seats, and a couple of different details. So we have about, I'm going to say, 25, 30 different paint schemes for, between the wow. two versions. Yeah. And uh, if you've seen our new look buses before, they're just packed with detail. Oh, yeah. We actually oh, did are. a 3D scan of a real new look bus up in Toronto. So we've got all the proportions, the contours, the rivets are all in the correct place. We've got full interior lights, separate seats, real rubber tires. The front axle, it's positionable wheels. So if you want to have them positioned in a steering position, oh, wow. we've got that too. Oh, oh nice. Cool. We've got uh, headlights, oh, oh, taillights, gosh. we've got everything in these buses. Okay, I know what's coming in five or ten years. You're going to have that RC, aren't you? We've uh, we've actually had a lot of people asking us if we're going to pass yes? them. Um, we Probably not in something we're going to do, but we've, I've heard of people doing uh, that with the Faller system, kind of outfitting mm -hmm. uh, a motor uh, onto the onto Right. The oh, yeah, you oh. can buy those. Yep. Uh, yep. That, yeah, wow. Mm -hmm. yep. I know, right? Exactly. I have one of those in my car right now. <laughs> <laughs> so other stuff we've got here, we've got our Slumber Coach. This is our HO Scale Bud Slumber Coach. Uh, this is actually a production model uh, with the, uh, this is a New York Central car. So technically it's a sleeper coach if you want to go by uh, New York Central terms. Full interiors, we've got uh, interior lighting. Uh, we've even got the mirrors on every door. So on the inside of the car, if you look inside, each car has the actual mirror reflective uh, so right on each door. So Does it a, come with the window shades in place? Yep, those are yeah. in place there on the wow. interior. Pad print on the inside, full underbody detailing. Uh, we've got capacitors for the lighting now. So if you've got any uh, rough track work or anything, it will not flicker. So that's, uh, that's a really cool model we've got coming out. I think they're leaving the factory maybe in the next few weeks. They're about wow. ready to leave, so those will be arriving this spring. A uh, couple all other things. Oh, sorry, all of your passenger cars that you guys come out with are just yeah, amazing. Yeah, the Mopac Dome oh, car. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I have yeah. every one that you've <sighs> made, and yes. I just I love them. They I, are amazing. George liked it so much when he's here. I gave it to George Bogotá. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah? We love George. <laughs> he, he, yeah, he really loves Excellent. that car, too. Excellent. We love passenger cars, and we actually just announced a whole a whole new release of our original smooth side cars because it's our 20th anniversary this year. Yeah. So we've got uh, we're returning with our smooth side coaches, our 10.5 sleepers. We've got like CSX uh, and the Conrail business cars, the OCS cars, Erie Lackawanna. Uh, we have our duplex sleeper. We've also returned with that. So we got three of our original passenger cars. They're coming back, and they're. Uh, filled with a ton of improvements, new lighting systems, wow. track-powered lighting systems, improved uh, yeah, fit exactly and finish. what I need. <laughs> so, uh, so that's uh, that's that's all coming. Uh, we just announced that earlier this month. So lots of passenger equipment, to say the least. Very cool. 
Um, what else we got here? We got the GP38s. Ooh, uh, we've got okay. the. Uh, just pick that up for a sec. That's our BNSF GP38. So I got all the correct uh, BNSF details. I believe these were they came from the BN, and I think they were originally Conrail way back in the day. Uh, I'll probably be corrected if I'm uh, if I don't have that exactly right. But yeah, we've done all the correct details. These have metal handrails. So the, our plastic stanchions and with the metal handrails. Let's talk a little bit about that because sure. that kind of blew me away. So the handrails are metal yep, yep. and the sconces that go down mm -hmm. are plastic yep. and they're molded mm -hmm. around the metal. Exactly. So when they're putting this together at the factory, there's not someone going and putting every single stanchion on the railing. It's actually the plastic is injected in a jig or in the mold right yes. around the metal railing. Wow. So yeah. it's just one piece. They, they take it, take it out, put it on the model. I so mean, how much more it's, durable? It's strong it's, oh, yeah. metal. Yeah. And exactly. they're scaled. And they're, exactly. Yes. And they're exactly. vertical. Yep. Amazing. Yep. Amazing. All that detail on there. Yep. And uh, so one other thing, uh, we've, this, we've been talking about this a lot on this trip, is our fans. So uh, we found some issues with the fans on our GP38s. And uh, we've actually uh, gone to Canon and Company, so Dave Hussey. We love and, Dave Hussey. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's, he's great. Oh, yeah. uh, we've actually, we, he's been a great help on a lot of projects that we've worked on. But we've actually licensed the Canon and Company fan designs. Uh, we're actually tooling that up now. And uh, we're going to use those. These are actually going to be put on the GP38. So this is a production model. But uh, the new fan designs will be put on the GP38s before they leave the factory. We're also going to use that on the GP40s in our SD7, 9, and 10 project, which is still in design, are all going to have Canon and Company licensed uh, fan designs that we're going to tool up based on, uh, on, on uh, their Beautiful. They're fans. Very yeah. cool. So uh, yeah, these are going to be showing up probably, I want to say late spring or early summer, and then uh, we'll have more information on the GP40s, which we've uh, which we've got announced as well pretty soon. Wow, very cool. Very yeah. very much. Very so. cool. Um, I have a question. Are you going to do those in the yellow and uh, the Santa Fe? Uh, yes, actually, we we have the GP38s. It's actually a, a rebuilt I... GP38 dash or, or GP39. Yeah. GP38M, I believe it is. Okay. I'm probably oh, not wow. saying the right designation, but it's it's got uh, we've got a version that's the correct Santa Fe in the uh, the yellow war bonnet that has the the special uh, Santa Fe switcher or switching uh, step wells, so it's totally unique for for the Santa Fe. Sweet. Yep. Yeah. yeah. How many locomotive numbers of each road are you doing? I believe it's four. Okay. It's three or, three <laughs> or good, four. Good, 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 good. It's good. three or four. You have to check on our website for the actual numbers. <laughs> no, that's, a, that's all I needed to hear. Yeah. Just more than two is good. Yes. Exactly. Because yeah. exactly. then you do a consist of three. Right. Of course. Of course. Of course. Our, okay. <laughs> all right. I'm talking just the way <laughs> I like to run trains. Renumber and do ten of them. Well, mind yes. you, yes. they're all seeing the beautiful photos of mm -hmm. these things. I'm mm -hmm. sure they're blown away at the fans, what we just showed them on the handrails mm -hmm. outside. Now, let's talk about these beautiful yellow models on the table. Yeah. So we have our very first HO scale factory decorated FA ones, yes. uh, FA1 and FB1 set. Uh, these actually just arrived, uh, we just got them ourselves. Uh, we, were so, we, were, we were hoping to get them for the trip, so we shipped them to Craig's house, uh, one of our, uh, one of our, our, uh, our guys. Uh, he's actually been on the tour with us up until just this morning. Uh, they just arrived last week. These are the first decorated samples. They have all the correct Union Pacific details, the correct see, headlight, see headlights see and everything. through the, the yep. grades. Yep. I know, that these is, lighting, uh, the light down here is for Look at that. You can actually, oh mm -hmm. gosh. I know. So you've got a lot of the, the correct details. You've got the uh, cooling coils on the roof. You have the etched metal fan uh, grates on top. The grills on the side are all etched metal, so you can see all the truss work on the inside. Mm, the detail in the cab, yep. too. Look Full cab that. interior. Mm -hmm. Nice. So these yes. are beautiful. Uh, and again, we we just saw them for the first time just this this previous week, so we're, we're really excited to see those. And they've been getting a lot of attention on this trip, to say the least. Yeah. Especially when we've been in the, in kind of Union Pacific territory in the Southwest. Welcome mm -hmm. to St. Louis. Exactly, exactly. Did Missouri Pacific have those? I think so. I think they did. PA ones? They, had, they definitely they had PAs. PAs. Uh, I don't think we've done <coughs> Mopac PAs yet. But we're probably going to do those in a third release. We actually just had our third release uh, order deadline, or second release order deadline, uh, about a week or two ago. And those are getting ready for production right now. The Santa Fe's are gorgeous. Oh, yeah. One of our podcast yeah. guys, James Regeer, has got the Santa Fe's that he runs mm -hmm. down here on the. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've actually, and that was, that was part of the second run, was the Santa Fe rebuilds. They, there was the three yeah, EMD that's... repowered units. Right. So we've got uh, those. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of other paint schemes that are going into production. We've got Missouri, Kansas, Texas in two oh, different yeah. paint variations, nice. which are really, really yeah. cool. Uh, GM and O, uh, lot, lots of schemes we did Some do of those the PAs went to Mexico, too. Absolutely, so, yeah, 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 the four DNA It's tunes. endless, right? Exactly, exactly. But these are really cool and will be arriving. I think these are actually the FAs. 
should be leaving the factory in the in the next uh, few weeks, I believe. They're wow. almost ready to go. That's great. Yep. Very yep. cool. So what's this little guy here that has no color on it? So this is probably one of our most. Uh, uh, it's it's a project that's been a long a long time in the in the works. This is our Fairbanks Morse H1644. We announced these a while back. Uh, so it's a lot of people have been very desperately hoping that we would get these uh, get these going, and we knew to have the first samples. This is the very first tooling sample. This is the Burlington, or not Burlington, what am I talking about? Baltimore and Ohio H1644. H1644. Uh, we also have them in a variety of other uh, body styles, because we found out that every railroad that we announced, they're all different. Sure. Uh, the Canadian ones have different trucks than the American ones. We've got CN and CP uh, for the Canadian roads. Uh, US-wise, we have New Haven. Uh, we have, I believe they went to Penn Central. We have B&O. We have the Virginian units that eventually went to uh, the Norfolk and Western. Uh, what else am I forgetting on, the, on that list? Milwaukee Road, and everyone's different. Different fuel tanks, different trucks, different cabs, different cab interiors. And uh, again, one of the most, well, probably one of the coolest things about these are we've, we've gone again with the metal handrails. So we actually first showed this unit about oh, a month or two ago, and everyone looked at this and said, darn, they've got plastic railings on there. <laughs> They're not. It's a, it's a new, finer size of, of metal railing we've used. Same system as the, as the GP38. Nice. You inject the plastic stanchion right around the metal handrail. And, uh, it it's, works. It's got, yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. It's, it's durable. It stands up very well. This engine has been to eight shows and eight events in the last week and a half. And it looks incredible. It's held up very well. Don't touch it. Exactly. <laughs> I'm going to shoot it outside. They just saw pictures of it. Exactly. It's probably all still intact in the photos. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but uh, there's so much detail. Uh, Dan Darnell, our uh, project manager on this, uh, is responsible for this we project. We love Dan Darnell. Oh, yeah. yeah. You've even got, you can see the little step. Uh, there's a little, uh, it's, it's non-functional because it's so tiny, but the little uh, glass globe yeah, for the, uh, the so step cool. well walkway light mm -hmm. on the end of the railing there. So they're, they're very cool. You need oh my God, glasses. I see it. Yeah. No, it's there. It's yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. Fortunately, it was too, too tiny to actually light that, but it looks really cool either way. James Greer, <laughs> here's your challenge. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and we'd love to see it. If anyone can actually get that lit, that would be absolutely amazing. That's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to say in closing? Well, uh, let's talk yeah. about where you're headed from here. Yep. You're here in so St. Louis. We're here in St. Louis. Chicago. Okay. Yep, we're, we're at the St. Charles Club just uh, northwest of St. Louis. To, uh, that's today. This so today is, what, the 24th? March 24th? Yes. Correct. Yep, we'll be there at uh, 5.30 tonight. Uh, tomorrow, we're at Lombard Hobbies up in, uh, in, oh, in Lombard, yeah. Illinois. Yeah. Chicago. Lombard, huh? yeah. we'll oh, my God. To, Jeff, uh, Andrew up there. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. All the people up there are so Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, we've been there several times. We always like going back. It's a, it's a great visit. And then uh, we're at uh, Des Plaines, I think, the day after that on the 26th. We're off to Riders and Flint on the 27th. And then I'm, we're back home to Toronto after that. So it's All been right. a, quite the whirlwind tour. And then they yeah. can see you at the Rocky Mountain Train Show, yes, correct? Yes, it will be so. at the Rocky Mountain Train Show. I won't be there myself, but uh, uh, the team of guys, uh, I can't remember exactly who's going to be there. I know Dar Dan Darnell's going to be there with some of our other project managers. I think Bill will be there as well. Uh, that's in uh, two weeks from this weekend. Yeah, so that's exciting. And then we got Train Fest, uh, not, not Train Fest, Super Train. I always get that one backwards. <laughs> Super, Super train. train coming up in Calgary in just a little over uh, a month from now, about wow. a month from now. Very, it's less than very a month from cool. Now, so. Yeah. <laughs> very cool. I Lots need, going on. I need a passport. We need to go to Canada. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you got to come up to the office. Yeah, absolutely. We got the we got CN's double track York sub right outside uh, right, right outside our door. Yeah, nice. We can go. So, vi we can go visit Lionel. We yeah. can go visit Bernard. We can mm -hmm, mm -hmm. make a whole couple week of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely. All right, we're gonna take these beautiful models outside. That sounds like a plan. And we're gonna shoot some pictures of them. Jordan, thank you so much. Well, thanks for having for me. For stopping yeah. by and being with us tonight. <laughs> thank you. I um, think we're gonna close this show like we close every single show because this is getting stitched in the end of 269. Sounds good, give me that. <laughs> so we're gonna, Jordan, do you know how to use the NCE system? Yes. Okay, Perfect. this you is go. good. You got the pro. So after we shoot these, I wanna run these. Can I run these? These have DCC sound. So we are are, okay, so we are gonna go run some. Sounds like All right. trades. <laughs> Bye guys, see you later. See you later. Okay, so we're going to use a thumbnail from the other show for this, right?
We'll and just then, add this on to the end of it. Right. It'll be yeah. perfect. Yeah. It'll just be... It'll uh, be perfect. <laughs> a live show. We'll planning. roll the credits and then it'll be like after a Marvel movie. Right? I'm rolling credits right now. Exactly. Yep. There we go. We did the thumbnail last night. Yeah. This is perfect. Absolutely. Wow. Those... those oh, my God. Those are beautiful. On, that's perfect. Okay. Excellent. That's what she wants. It takes All a right. fifth of a second to shoot each photo. <laughs> So you're going to do these in KD also with the PAD? So we've got the, uh, the PAs, so the, uh, the A1, yes. A6 actual ones. Yeah. We're doing them in MKT. Uh, we've got either the, so there's two versions. There's the shadow lined or the non-shadow lined. Uh, again, I don't know exactly what the scheme is called. We've got two versions of that. Um, we'll show the renders off on our, on our website in a couple places. But so the MKT. We we haven't done Mopac yet, but we need to do that. Yeah. Uh, we've actually found uh, that Mopac is uh, very popular, uh, but we've been trying to convince Jason that for a while, and he's kind of seen the light now. Mm -hmm. So we've, we definitely have some Mopac stuff that uh, is in the future. We've actually part of our, our faster cars, our smooth side. Yeah. We, we went out some of them. Yeah. Coaches in Mopac. Nice smooth sides. Cool. I think it has. Uh,